Hey guys, it's Dan from Soy Leader and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today on episode two of One Take Wednesday, we're gonna be going over my SWAT duty belt along with my everyday belt in the new unit I'm in, which is a plain clothes unit. So essentially think of it as like a warrant, uh, a warrant belt basically. So uh, first things first here, Hopefully the focus on the camera works well. I've been testing this out a little bit briefly and hopefully the microphone sounds a little better than last week. If I can just uh, you know, improve these videos a fraction of the time, each one, uh, hopefully we should have a pretty polished uh, product here by the end of the series. So uh, first things first, the actual belt itself is made by Ronin Tactics. Uh, the two belts I'm, I'm pretty familiar with is the Ronin Tactics belt and then the Lead Devil belt. Both are solid belts. Uh, each of them have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, this just happens to be the one that were issued for the team. So, uh, standard Ronin Tactics belt. Uh, again, I'm just going to start on one side and work my way forward. So, I do run the buckle. I still run the buckle uh, at my 12 o'clock, so right in the middle, like where your zipper is. Uh, I know a lot of guys are starting to shift that over to where their holster is. There's definitely good reasons to do that. Uh, it just basically depends on, on what you like. Uh, as far as pistol mag holders, I've got these uh, Blade Tech. These are just a standard blade tech ones that I painted black and uh, I actually modified them to be at that 45 degree angle. Uh, I may eventually do a video on how to do that, but essentially you drill your own holes and then use a uh, Dremel to open them up a little bit so you can put the hardware right through there and you get that nice 45 degree cant. Uh, I will note on the back side of that, I do have Velcro. You'll see a lot of hook Velcro. All this is is heavy duty adhesive Velcro. Uh, Right here, I'll throw a link in the description, but essentially you can pick this up, Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon, and uh, it'll last you for everything. You can line your Pelican cases with it and whatnot. So it's good to have that around the house, but essentially I just cut a little square, stick that on the back, and that way I have more uh, Velcro real estate again on the back of the belt. So all these belts, the Ronin Tactics, the Lead Devil, are a two belt system. So you run the inner belt on your pants, which is usually a loop lined, and then the outer belt, which is hook lined. All right. So moving over, as we talked about last week on episode uh, one, I have that HK clip here, right? So this HK clip is woven through the Molly, right? Not just looped on there and attached with Velcro, it's mollied through as well. So I could probably hang off of this clip and it's not gonna go anywhere. So HK clips are very strong. This one I made, cause obviously that's kind of what I do. Uh, if you're looking to purchase one, I know Lead Devil sells them on their website. Uh, they're probably around $15. Just, just be advised that they're, they're that expensive because this HK clip alone is about uh, five bucks. So hanging off those, I always keep a pair of gloves. Uh, as a breacher, uh, I like the added protection of the padded knuckles. Again, I don't need like anything hard like motorcycle gloves. I'm not lumping anyone up. These are purely for protecting my hands for doing breaching. Uh, these are made by uh, SKD Tactical. They're their pig gloves. There's a bunch of alpha models. I'm not sure exactly which ones these are. They're not the fire retardant ones, uh, but that's what I'm running for gloves. Behind that, you guys should all be familiar with at this point, is a chem bundle right here hooked to the wire uh, link. So again, staged just like I told you guys it would be right on the belt. Uh, moving back, I've got the STAC M4. Uh, this is my speed reload mag pouch. So again, this is just uh, mouse clipped on there, holds one AR mag. Uh, again, I keep that on my side. That's my speed reload for, uh, you know, for doing reloads with the M4. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, moving back here, you'll find I have a modified cry drop leg pouch. Right, so again, this is mollied on the belt. It might be a little hard for you to see. Let me try to hold it up here. It's mollied on the belt right here. And what this does is it has a little male female connector, right? And I can clip, unclip that. And I've got my gas mask right here in a little general purpose pouch made by Cry Precision. Uh, inside here is just an Avon gas mask. Uh, I'm not gonna bother taking it out of here now. You can Google what Avon gas mask is. But essentially the filter is off of it. And the filter, brand new filter is actually behind it in it to help keep the form of the mask so you're not squishing it down and causing a seal issue down the road. Uh, a lot of the times, depending on what we're doing, we'll actually pop these off, the little drop leg strap. We'll pop this off and we'll hang it on the top of the APC railing inside the APC so that we know where it is in case we need it if we're deploying gas. So I'll set that aside for now. But again, when I'm not running it, you can see here the buckle stays put but it allows me to not have all the bulk on my leg. 
Uh, moving back here, I've got my drop leg, or I'm sorry, my uh, dump pouch. Now this dump pouch is uh, the same design as Extreme Gear Labs. Uh, Darren over at Extreme Gear Labs, great guy. He, uh, he was actually helping me learn how to sew a few years back, helping me uh, kind of get everything going. Uh, I actually bought my first sewing machine after talking to him on the phone. So great guy, he's helped me out a bunch. Uh, this is his uh, dump pouch that I happen to just make to learn how to sew. So I made this one, but obviously Darren sells those, Extreme Gear Labs, check them out. Uh, great little compact dump pouch. Again, I'm not looking for anything huge. I very rarely use it, but when I do use it, uh, it holds everything I need it to hold, but also stows out of the way when you're not using it. Uh, next up, probably the best med kit out there. Uh, this is made by Cody Tactical Solutions, and it's the Stomp. This is one of the newer generations where the zipper is all, uh, all protected. It's the reverse zipper. It's got the squadron uh, pouch over here, as well as a tourniquet holder on the bottom. So to activate it, simply pop that off. You can pull this away. It's a tearaway IFAX. You can pull this away, keep whatever uh, medical gear you, you keep in there. Again, this is a pretty standard IFAX right here. I think the only thing extra that I have in this that most people probably don't is uh, just Narcan. Uh, moving around here, I do keep a, uh, a pair of handcuffs in a handcuff case. This is the uh, high-speed gear handcuff case. I found this to be the, the best one, easiest to deploy. Uh, I do keep, this has a removable top on here. I do keep that on there though, because when I'm running the breaching shotgun, I'm running a high powered magnet. It has pulled these handcuffs off onto the magnet. So I do keep that little retainer on there, but these work great, I have no issues with these. Uh, what you'll find though, anything that has bungee, this is a good example of it, right? So when you're going through your kit and you're setting it up, you can see here there's no snag hazards, right? Uh, I'd say the only snag hazards right there are gonna be the chem lights and the gloves, but the gloves I'm wearing, and if you find a better way to do the chem lights, let me know. But I haven't had those snag yet, but uh, obviously that could happen. But what I'm getting at here is the handcuff case itself has a bunch of shock cord on it, right? And a lot of times you'll see guys where they'll pull it, they'll cinch it tight, and they'll have a big tail of shock cord on here. Make sure you cut that, tie knot in it, cut it where you need it, and then melt the edges of it and keep it nice and snug there. You don't want this thing having a bunch of dangly uh, shot cord on it that can get caught. Uh, moving up here, just a Safari Land holster, uh, 6000 series. This happens to work for my uh, duty weapon, which right now is a Glock 17 MOS with a uh, Aimpoint Acro P2 on it. So I'm testing that out right now. So far, it's phenomenal. Uh, I, I was relatively new to the Red Dot game and it's a game changer for sure. But uh, this is wrapped with uh, Balticam, which is stock from uh, Safari Land. So, and then, hey, I gotta do this, the plug in here as well, right? So right here, I've got the belt mount tourniquet holder version three. You can see it looks a little close to that holster, but when you're actually wearing the belt, based on the angle of it, you can see there that it does stay away from the belt there. Uh, it does not interfere with the hood, uh, you know, for the level three holster here. Belt mount tourniquet holder, as you can see here, I've got the one wrap wrapped on the back side, right? This is the version three, so it still adds that Velcro real estate to the back side while also helping maintain the integrity of the tourniquet holder by, or the tourniquet by having it protect the uh, windlass retainer with the removable hood. All right. Uh, lastly, the one thing I didn't go over yet for this belt will be the Yates lanyard system, right? So uh, very rarely am I getting in helicopters, uh, but this can be used for that. What I'm actually using it for is when we're running on the running boards of the armored uh, personnel carrier, the APCs. Uh, Basically, we don't want guys falling off. It has happened throughout the country. So essentially, this hooks on the outrunning board rail. And then when you're pulling up the target, you can just simply pull this right here. And without doing it, there we go, pull it there. This stays on the APC and you detach from it. So it's just a little safety mechanism uh, used so guys aren't falling off the APCs and getting hurt uh, before getting to the, uh, the house or wherever we're doing. Uh, one of the guys who does the helicopter stuff basically said, hey, if you actually were running this in helicopters, which again, I've only been in a helicopter, I think twice now, is don't run that on the front. So if you were to fall out, it pulls you here and like breaks your back. You actually run it on the back uh, so that when it pulls you, your back folds with it. Something to think about. Uh, again, make sure if you are doing that stuff that you have a belt that is a load bearing belt uh, that's been safety tested. So like a Yates belt, uh, 
a lot of guys were running the Yates belts with the cry precision uh, sleeve going over it. So just a thought. Uh, I'm gonna take this belt, move this to the side now. And we'll go over the everyday uh, belt now for my new unit. So my new unit's basically a plain clothes unit. Uh, so a lot of the time we were doing surveillance. As far as the underbelt goes, uh, the standard underbelts that are issued, well, I'm sorry, not issued, but that come with the outer belts work pretty well. But you'll find uh, for running it with just a holster on there, right? I usually run an appendix holster. Uh, you don't have the rigidity of it. So this is a secure, Segura gear uh, company. I'll, I'll link them as well. Uh, this is my everyday carry belt. It is loop lined here, right? So. This is what I'm wearing every day. You can see how rigid it is, right? And uh, this one happens to be multicam black. I think they were out of stock on the black when I ended up buying it. So I went with something as close as I could. But essentially, nice belt for wearing uh, everyday carry. Keep your gun on either appendix or on the side. If for whatever reason you need to uh, throw on the you know tactical belt, whatever you want to call it, but essentially a belt that has all your tools on it as well as retention for your holster, I'll simply just pull that holster off of this one Retighten it down and then put this belt right over it, right? So it's one thing I like I don't have to take this belt off throw the other inner belt on it kind of does both things uh, And it's been pretty great. I've had this for six months now running it daily and I have no complaints for it So well done on making this belt uh, Moving along again. This belt right here is the same thing. It's gonna be the Ronin tactics belt uh, For the standard overall belt here and it's gonna you're gonna see it's very similar but there's a couple things I want to go over real quick with it. So a standard Ronin Tactics belt, again, Blade Tech holsters at the 45 degrees. I, ha I have really liked those. Uh, they've worked really well for me now, uh, just based on how your hand lines up with them when you're going to draw. So it works really well. Again, one AR mag. You'll notice gloves once again, no chem lights on this belt. Uh, the big difference you'll see here right, is that there's no med kit on the back, right? I am running a med kit. When I throw this on, I'm throwing my plate carrier on with it. That has a dangler on the front underneath it so I can get to my med gear. Uh, if I'm not running that, I'll roll and run like the Feral Concepts roll one on the back, but sitting in vehicles after a while, I, I tried that for a few weeks and it was just killing my back. So I went back to the front pouch. Uh, but again, nothing on the small of the back here to help when you're sitting on surveillance for a while uh, not destroying your back, right? If, uh, if anyone has a solution for running a med kit on your back where you don't have back problems, let me know because it destroys my back. But there you go. Those are two uh, just basic setups here. You'll notice that the holsters are also on the QLS system. Uh, I've got mixed feelings on it, right? So both of these, one thing I forgot to mention, both of these holsters have a negative camp plate on them from Theory Police. Uh, excellent product. I freaking love it. You, you have a very hard time running these red dot holsters without that. It really does help adjust that cant so you get that 12 o'clock or a negative cant if you want it. Uh, for me, I run just a little bit negative cant. Uh, it does help with the draw. So highly recommend those if you're running a red dot holster. But as far as a QLS itself, uh, the goods to it is it does push your holster out a little bit, which is nice if you're running a plate carrier and you need that. Uh, same with if you're wearing garments or like hoodies and stuff, it helps kind of push that away. Uh, the only thing I will say is anytime you add extra stuff, what you're essentially doing is adding failure points. So if you can see here, uh, where's a good one I can show you? This one, not so much. Oh, I'm sorry, right here, yeah. So if you can see here, I've got Gorilla Tape, right? Stuck on the inside and like, hey man, what is that? Essentially what's in there is two Allen wrenches, right? So one to adjust the QLS if any of those screws get loosened and the other one for, uh, for another piece of that holster, right? So two Allen wrenches sitting here under grill tape. It doesn't bother me whatsoever and I'd highly recommend doing that if you're running a Safari Land holster. It doesn't take up any room and you have the tools on you if you need them. So, all right, well that does it for this week's uh, One Take Wednesday. If you have any questions, again, comment below or send me a DM on Instagram. I look forward to hearing uh, what you have to say. And uh, again, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Thanks again, see you next week.